Good evening guys. Tonight I'm going to be installing a whole house humidifier setup from April Air on my uh, 2016 model year Goodman furnace. Um, the idea behind these things is they take a slow trickle of water from a water pipe that I'll show you. Uh, we pierce that water pipe with one of these self-piercing saddle valves. After that, we run it through copper or PEX tubing. I chose PEX because that's kind of what people do now. And then it comes into this, our humidifier. Through that brass fitting right there, through this solenoid, which is configured and uh, tripped by electronics coming from the furnace, and our humidistat. And that actually runs through this, the humidifier pan, uh, pad. So all this does is trickles water through it slowly and it evaporates into the air. And the air goes into your, uh, basically your feed duct on the furnace and propagates throughout your entire house, slowly raising the humidity. This April air unit is rated for, I think 3000 square feet. I have 1800 finished square feet in this house. So this will be a great plenty. Uh, this is a reversible unit. Uh, what that means is you can have the duct facing out left or out to the right. Uh, in this install, I'm going to be facing out to the left, which means I don't have to mess around changing this badge upside down, which you can do. So step one, other than gathering all of the necessary parts, is going to be take your six inch flange that you bought, preferably with the lever on it, uh, you don't actually need this with the April Air unit because that has a summer winter lever in it already. And this is the one step I've done so far already, which was to trace a Sharpie circle around where it goes. Now, some humidifiers are directional, which means you have to install it on either the feed or the return duct. The April Air does not seem to care in the documentation. Uh, things you have to watch out for. You cannot mount the flange in the actual furnace. You cannot mount it in your AC coil, which is this trapezoid right here. One of the legs has to come in the plenum space above it, and the other can be anywhere in this whole mama jama right here. So figure out what works best for you for accessibility, and then sort of make your hole there. My tentative plan right now is to put the flange right here, so I have easy access to the flipper, run the ductwork around, and then mount my humidifier right around here, maybe up a little higher. <clears throat> That's the plan. So uh, I'm gonna get the template for the cutout. Ignore my cat, he is very curious. Still very curious. Um, the template is actually your instruction sheet. There it is, it's just eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. I'm gonna put that on the furnace, make a Sharpie cutout. And then I'm gonna get my drill bit and I'm going to get my shears. These are commonly available anywhere for just a few dollars and they will make this project very easy. So there we have hole number one. You can see my AC evaporator coil. So I missed that, pretty easy. You can tell there was a smoker in this house at one point and I installed the AC. <laughs> Still, it looks decent in there. So uh, this doesn't have to be perfect. Um, the flange I bought has some foam rubber on the back of it uh, for sealing. And then it's actually got these really cool zip ties that uh, I'll show you how they work. But basically you start them on each of the four corners and then you put them in the duct and then you can pull them tight outside and it gets it nice and tight. Uh, I will still be using quite a bit of duct tape, uh, this stuff. Awesome stuff to have, even around the house, even if you do no HVAC work. <laughs> so next up, I'll prep that, and then I'll show you exactly how that looks with the little zip ties on it. And then I'll get it roughed in. Hi, Modi. <laughs> and, uh, and then we'll start cutting the hole for the actual humidifier. So here you go. Um... That's basically what I mean. So you'll just fold these in, stick that into your duct, make sure your summer winter lever is somewhere where you can easily find it, and then mark uh, which one is which. 
because you're not going to know necessarily when this is installed, which is open, which is closed. Uh, generally speaking, closed is perpendicular and open is straight on, so we could probably figure this out. But I am going to install this, um, and yeah, we'll go from there. And there is the very same hole, after I used my trusty little pliers to just sort of bend the edges in. Still extremely sharp, but that should do the trick. So there we have it. That's going to be our main duct. I'm going to trim off these little zip tie excesses. And then I'm going to work on <clears throat> mounting the humidifier unit. I may have to relocate this little information storage thing over just a little bit, but that's just fine. And there we have the rough hole for the humidifier. Um, this, on the other hand, does not have any sort of rubberized coating on the back, so I'm actually going to run out to my garage and see if I can find um, a little something-something for that. Uh, and then I'm also going to get some self-tapping screws, because although this does come with two screws, they're not really designed for this, so it might be for something else. So I'm going to grab a couple pieces of hardware and then mount this up on the furnace. So here we have the housing for the April Air humidifier installed. We've got the openable flap there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put a couple more screws in it. You can see I've got just a few around the perimeter. Uh, and I actually stuffed a little bit of fiberglass behind it here, um, just as a kind of a barrier to keep most of the air in. It doesn't come with any provision to do this, but I felt that it was important. Um, make sure that your drainage tube holes on the bottom. And once you've done that, find your cartridge and look for your little water feed hole. And then, sorry, it's difficult to film and do at the same time. Oh my. One second. I'm just going to do this and then come back. Okay, so the pad's in. Go ahead, put your hose in, and you're pretty much set with this. Just uh, smack the cover on it, and then you're ready to put your duct on. So there's the installed humidifier, and here's the ductwork that I chose. Uh, it's just six inch flexible duct. I think this goes up to 10 feet, which is more than I need. And I've just got it over here, taped to my flange, and taped to the humidifier as well. Um, it has a nice slip over fit on the flange. It's actually the same OD as this, which isn't ideal, but this is good tape, so hopefully that holds up. That's not really how I would have liked to see it. Maybe I'll get a piece of rigid um, with a, an inside diameter or sorry, an outside diameter that's compatible with the inside diameter of these, and then screw it together and then tape it again. But for the meantime, I can still run my furnace like this, which is important. Um, next up for me is gonna be installing that self-piercing saddle valve. Uh, in order to do that, you're gonna wanna find water lines. Lucky for me, my water heater is right next to your furnace. For you, that's probably the same. Um, the instructions uh, say that they prefer hot water, but they work on either hot or cold. Uh, I know that this line up here goes to my silcock in the backyard, so I'm probably just going to put my valve right here in this piece of pipe. Um, those valves work really, really well on half and three quarter inch copper, uh, M, N, or L. It's all just fine. So uh, I'm just going to unbag everything and kind of show you how it works, and then we'll get going on installing it back there. So here we have the contents of the saddle valve. Hey, buddy. So here's the valve itself. Um, there's the rubber that actually comes with it, but it's not pre-installed. You got fasteners. Uh, this is actually the compression nut and the fitting from the humidifier. This is the one that came with my kit. And then we have little plastic, actually they're nylon uh, compression. And we also have, uh, these are a little more confusing. Uh, they slide inside of the tube and that's what they compress against. So it actually slides into the end right here. Like we've got the nut and then we've got the uh, plastic compression sleeve with the uh, 
the slope facing toward the orifice, and then we've got the actual compressant insert there. Uh, once you've got that done, you can just put that right onto your uh, humidifier inlet and then tighten it down. Uh, you really don't have to get it too tight. Uh, snug for now and then snug it down a little bit more once you make sure you don't have leaks. Uh, and then the other end is going to go to the same type of deal, which goes into this. All you have to do on these, these are actually really cool, um, is tighten it down. you got the two nuts and screws on top of your water pipe. Make sure it's nice and tight. Um, and then <laughs> literally all you do is you twist this handle until the incredibly sharp tip in there punctures your uh, half or three quarter inch water line and then you've got water coming out of here. Uh, my only recommendation would be potentially um, hook everything up, uh, do your compression nuts and actually hook it up to this first. That way uh, if you do get some water, which you will, <laughs> you don't make a mess. Well, sorry for the noise, the furnace is running, so um, I've got this tightened down to the point where I can't move it, and uh, yeah, really all you got to do is twist on that until you puncture it, you want to go, actually I think you just go all the way in, and it's actually closed right now, which would make sense, and then when you open it back up, you've got water. This is actually, oh, sorry. <laughs> it's quite difficult to turn with one hand. So please do excuse me. Oh, wow. So it's getting a little easier. Very easy now. Okay. Perfect. Now I'm going to get my fittings on there and we're going to test her out. So there, I've got my half inch line, and I recommend ordering a little bit more length than you think you need. Mine only went to about there. So what I did is, I don't recommend you do this on your own setup, but I'm pretty confident that gravity will be with me on this one. I just made a half inch hole and punctured that tube right on into there, so it shares it with the AC line. These two systems will probably never run at the same time anyway. This is very much a winter system, the AC is very much a summer system, so. Should be just fine. Uh, if it's a problem, I'll just end up replacing the whole thing with PVC at that point. Uh, rigid PVC. Um, the water line's still holding good after several minutes, which I like to see. No issue at all. Next step for me is going to be digging out the electronics for this system. Um, the gist of how this works. Uh, your thermostat triggers your furnace to run with a little 24 volt AC signal, the W wire. Um, what this Aprilia system uh, does is it interfaces with that W signal and the R, um, or I guess the common, I believe it is the R though, um, on your actual furnace if it is a uh, 24 volt furnace. Some older ones don't have that um, uh, power circuit so they can't trigger the solenoid, etc. The system actually does come with a, a nice little uh, 24 volt, I don't know if this is uh, 42VA. It's actually a pretty chunky little transformer. Pretty effective for its size. Oh, Modi, you're such a goof. <clears throat> and basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount that on my furnace's on off switch, assuming that I've got a uh, hot and a neutral in there, which I hope I do. Just punch out the side right here, hook it up, I will be cutting the power to this with my breaker box, my load center. Um, but anyway, I digress. What this system will do is it'll look for the fan signal coming from your thermostat to the furnace, and when it sees that, it'll put its own 24 volts to this solenoid, which is just an electric on-off faucet, basically. So when there's no power going to it, it's off. There's 24 volts going to it, it's open, on, full blast. And all that's doing is filtering a whole bunch of water down that wafer inside and dumping the excess in the garbage. <clears throat> but it's only doing that when the fan is running because <laughs> if, if it was to put water through all the time, you'd literally just be running a tap of water down the drain for no reason. When the fan is running, it's pushing air through that honeycomb and it's taking water with it and putting it through your entire house, which is really, really helpful, I find for uh, increasing humidity. 
the actual humidistat itself, this right here, nothing too fancy. You just set it at whatever percentage humidity you want. Uh, it's got a nice guide right here. Wow. <clears throat> I'm not sure what I'm going to set it at. Right now we're probably around the 35 range, but I want to leave it at kind of a happy medium amount where I can wake up without a dry mouth in the morning. But this thing's only looking for the airflow signal to turn on the solenoid, and then it will also um, disable the humidifier from running if the uh, humidity in the air is uh, too much, if there's too much humidity in the air. How it does that is you actually drill this thing into your duct. So we'll have to make another hole in the duct, it looks like. Otherwise, I don't know why it would have foam in it. <clears throat> Um, but yeah, this is a learning experience for me too. It's not a very complicated system, but it's interesting how it works. So here's the inside of my furnace. There's my 24 volt transformer. And here we have, oh Modi, no, 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 no. <laughs> here we have the actual uh, header and um, G is fan, C is common, R is 24 volts AC. Uh, and Y is cooling, W is heat. So what I want to tie into is fan, which is going to be G, and then I believe either C or R. That one I'm going to have to get my multimeter. I'm not sure which one of those two completes the circuit. And what I'm going to do from that is I'm going to run it through the humidistat and then straight to the relay. So I'm going to figure out which one of those is going to give me 24 volts AC to trigger that solenoid. And then once I've figured that out, I can run it through that as a secondary switch. Because that's going to give me power when the fan's on. But if I wired that straight to the solenoid, that would go and make the house 100% humid. Or humidity, which I don't want. So what that's doing is it's breaking that signal every time the humidity gets too high. Um, that's not a configuration that's listed on the instructions. I'm not exactly sure why, because that's, it seems smart to me. I don't know. Um, the only downside to this is, well, I guess not, because that's still going to control the humidity in the summer when it's hotter. So you do have to remember whether or not your, um, humidifier is on or not. So you can come down here and shut it off. But <clears throat> I think this will be the best solution because that will kind of give me checks and balances and that's, that's pretty important. So I'm going to try that and uh, I'll report back on what it actually is that makes this work. So you can see I've got 27 volts against the R and the C. Uh, what that is for is to power your modern thermostats. Uh, and what I'm going to be checking for is to see which, uh, whether it's R or it's G that bridged uh, will gain us uh, that voltage or sorry, C or R. So right now, if I go between R and G, I've got full voltage, which means it should be triggered. If I go between C and G, I've got nothing. So I'm going to see if that fires the furnace in just a second here. I'm also going to check W and R. I'm oh, sorry. So I've got voltage on the fan and the heat. Just to double check. Oh. <clears throat> okay. So I'm pretty sure that's gonna be what I'm gonna wanna do. Uh, I'm gonna find, I've got thermostat wire somewhere. The uh, system for whatever reason didn't come with anything, which is a little strange. So I'm gonna use, uh, all you need is 18.2, which is this. I'm actually gonna use 18.5 or 18.8, which is the modern thermostat stuff, and I'm just not gonna use most of the other wires. Um, but I'm gonna go get that, and then I'm gonna show you exactly uh, what it is that I'm gonna do here. And then you can choose to replicate uh, this solution if you want, otherwise April Air has a couple other configurations listed in their uh, installation manual. If you would rather go a little more by the book, um, the main reason I don't want to do uh, do the insulation how they suggest is because I don't see any checks and balances here for the fan actually running. So unless um, this box right here 
when it's mounted in your duct can somehow sense airflow, which it might be able to. I wouldn't trust that because it's just going to run your water all the time, even when your furnace fan isn't running. So I don't like that inefficiency aspect. That's why I think running it through uh, the fan trigger instead of just a constant power is a good idea. Um, the thermostat should be able to handle triggering this uh, solenoid with no problem at all. Modern thermostats are pretty chunky. If you're concerned about it, you can use a uh, AC relay as well. But like I said, I'm going to uh, go get my thermostat wire and start the process of wiring this up. I've been using my lovely Wi-Fi thermostat to trigger stuff on and off. And what I've found is I do want to use the common and the green as my power. So that's what I'm gonna do. I've got my 18.5 here. I'm gonna put it into my furnace case. I do recommend you do this with your furnace power off. Uh, do what I say and not what I do. I'm gonna have to pull the upper cover off probably it looks like to get to this. Unless I puncture a hole in the bottom here. But anyway, I'm gonna hook uh, the green up to the green and I'm actually gonna get the blue out and hook that up instead of the red. Um, and then I'm going to run this over um, to my solenoid and then to my humidistat. All right, only one more hole in my poor furnace ducting. And that is for my humidistat. So I've got uh, the green and the C hooked up to my furnace. I've got the green interrupted at the solenoid. And then I will use the blue and the green on the end of this wire on the two pins on my humidistat. All this is, is a contactor that flips on when it's too dry and flips off when it's too humid. All this is, is an electric switch. So this is just completing the circuit using the power from the blower fan trigger, and then that is powering the solenoid. It's actually a pretty simple electronic diagram. I'll draw you a diagram when I'm done so you understand exactly what I'm doing. But I'm gonna cut that hole. I'm gonna get that thing mounted up and we will see if my idiocy is functional. Okay, so I've got the blue wire and the green wire going up here, and then I've got the green wire, I will clean this up, I promise, into the solenoid here, and then I've got <clears throat> the blue and the green down here. So what I'm gonna do right now is grab my other phone I'm going to turn that up so there's contact. Then I'm going to grab my other phone and I'm going to turn on the fan. And hopefully that will make water start flowing from the solenoid. Can't tell if that worked or not. I might have to get my multimeter and check some stuff up here. All right, I was able to make it work. <laughs> so right now, I turn it, I just cranked it up. And the solenoid is flowing. And we've got water flowing. So she, as soon as I open both of these ducts, she is humidifying. Awesome, cool. I'm gonna crank that back down to 25%, but that will work. I suppose I'll turn my fan back off too. Actually, crank it up. <laughs> I just wanna make sure this works. Switch this back to auto. And then that should kill the fan, and that should automatically kill my solenoid. <clears throat> which, oh. I think that worked. I'm gonna check it for voltage right now, which I can't do with one hand, but I don't hear any water flowing. So I think we are good to go. That is a good system. <laughs> Honestly, that's gonna be perfect. Um, Ta-da, I'm gonna mount this uh, drain hose a little bit better. Probably tidy up this wiring a little bit better. Definitely get some wire nuts for this since it's grounding on the solenoid right now, which is super ghetto. Um, replace that with new zip ties instead of just a twist tie. And then of course, cover my furnace back up. But uh, yeah, like I said, 
I'll drop a diagram of what I did here to show you guys on paper just to make it make a little bit more sense, but it's really simple. And uh, the hardware shouldn't have any issue taking this. Well, here's my lovely art. Um, thermostat, solenoid, humidistat, furnace. All you really have to understand is that uh, C is the common. So anything that needs voltage is gonna use this as one half of its circuit. So what, what I mean by that is C and R, which is your blue and your red wire, those together are 24 volts. That powers your fancy electronic thermostats, you don't need batteries. If you connect C and G, that means you get 24 volts coming back to the furnace, which tells it to fire for the fan. Um, the C and the G on this side are the same exact connection. So those are, I just have them on different sides to illustrate this a little bit better. So C is our common. We go straight to the humidistat. That's just a switch, like a light switch on your wall. Once it gets too dry, it flips it on. I don't know how that works. It's amazing, but it does. And then we have a wire coming out of that. There's only two contacts on this to one side of this solenoid. This is a 24 volt device, just like your thermostat. If it has 24 volts, it's open. Water's flowing. If it doesn't, it's off. And then we have G from the furnace and thermostat, same thing, to the other side. So once you have C and G, you've got a complete circuit, you've got voltage. I like this better than what they suggest because here for the manual control, they're literally just showing C and R. And all it's doing is putting this between there. So if your house is really dry and you're not actually running your furnace at all, it's just gonna be pouring water down the drain, which I don't like at all. This gives you that same functionality, but it also gives you the benefit of not running your water down the drain when the furnace isn't running, if that makes any sense. So that's implying that we would basically just be having C and R. So full voltage all the time and then let the humidistat handle it. But what we're doing is letting the humidistat handle it only when there's actually airflow, because this device, the humidifier, depends on airflow to work. It's blowing air through a watery honeycomb and that's all it does. So if you're gonna wire up one of these Aprilair 500 series, I guess it's a 500M, I'd recommend at least giving this a thought. Um, you can wire it how they say it's, it's probably not gonna do any damage. It would worry me a little bit having the, uh, the water flowing to a furnace that's off though. I think it might, you know, flood out your furnace, might cause corrosion prematurely, and you're just wasting a ton of water. So sorry if that was a lot of words, but uh, the basics of HVAC triggering, um, I do quite a bit of this for my the company I work for, even though I'm not, a, I want to emphasize I'm not a licensed HVAC contractor. And if you do this and it burns your house down or it floods it, it is not my fault. But this is how I did it. And I think this is the smart way to go. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions about it, uh, feel free to let me know. If I did something horribly wrong and you are an HVAC contractor, I'm sure you'll tell me about it. But <clears throat> here's my install. It looks like it's, it's working really, ooh. There's one thing I still have left to do. I would never deprive myself the pleasure of peeling one of those. <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. And I'm happy to field uh, anything I'm able. I probably won't answer your question if I don't know the answer. But uh, again, yeah, thanks for following along. And hopefully that was at least mildly enjoyable slash informative.